Hello, I'm Stephen Walker, author of Lent, The Haunting History. And in today's episode of Lent Lessons, I'm in St. Louis's beautiful Bellefontaine Cemetery to take an inside look at the historic Lent Mausoleum. The mausoleum was made necessary by the sudden death of Frederick Lemp, one of the sons of William J. Lemp Sr. Fred passed away in December 1901, and his body was stored in a holding crypt at the cemetery until the mausoleum was completed the following year. The massive tomb is said to have been the crowning achievement in the career of designer Frank Henry Kronig. It's constructed of the finest Vermont granite and cost $60,000 to build. It's the largest mausoleum in the cemetery, both in physical size and in the number of interments within, even though 18 of its 32 crypts remain empty. So we're going to be opening the Lemp Mausoleum today with the actual uh, key that belonged to William J. Lemp and uh, it has his fob on it as well. So, um, we'll head on in. Most members of the Lemp family can be found within the mausoleum, but there are a few exceptions. One notable absence is family patriarch Adam Lemp, who was buried in his own plot at Bellefontaine upon his death in 1862, 40 years before the mausoleum was built. Another is Annie, William Lemp's eldest child, who moved to New York City shortly after her marriage to Alexander Conta in 1895. Hilda, another of William Sr.'s daughters, is buried in Milwaukee, where she relocated after her marriage to Gustav Pabst, another giant of the brewing industry. The most secretive and eccentric member of the family, Charles Lemp, another son of William Sr., opted out of the family mausoleum, declaring that he had no desire to end up in what he described as that God-forsaken tomb. Several years before his death, he made arrangements to be cremated, ordering that his ashes be placed in a wicker basket and buried on his farm, which was located in South St. Louis County. Lillian Handlin Lemp, once known as the Lavender Lady, is also entombed within the Lemp Mausoleum. Though she was no longer a Lemp after her 1909 divorce from William Lemp Jr., she approached her former brother-in-law, Edwin Lemp, to ask special permission to be laid to rest next to her beloved son, William J. Lemp III. Edwin kindly consented to her wish, and she now rests forever next to her son, while maintaining a safe distance from her ex-husband. Perhaps the most intriguing of all the Lemp interments is that of Elsa Lemp Wright, who died in 1920. Though the coroner ruled her death a suicide, Edwin found it suspicious. So he ordered that her casket include an airtight copper lining, which he thought would preserve his sister's body in case an autopsy might one day be ordered, but none ever took place. When it came time for William J. Lemp to select a crypt in which to place Frederick's casket, he made a very thoughtful and deliberate choice of location, as Richard Lay describes. When uh, Frederick Lemp died in uh, December of 1901, he was the heir apparent to the brewery. And uh, William was just devastated because he was really counting on Frederick to carry the Lemp brewery forward. And when he selected this tomb and this particular place for burial, he wanted Frederick to be to his uh, to his right, and he wanted Frederick to be at heart level. So um, you you find William and his wife, and then his his son uh, right next to him and at heart level. Just two years later, upon his 1904 suicide, the elder lamp would be placed in the crypt next to Fred's. Visitors to the mausoleum are often pleasantly surprised at the lack of foul odors within a facility that contains the remains of 15 deceased individuals. This is due in large part to an ingenious and all but invisible ventilation system, similar to the one shown here, that allows air to circulate through the crypts and dehydrate the bodies, preventing any detectable odors of decomposition. The only evidence of the ventilation system are the many decorative vent openings at the top and bottom of the exterior walls. In contrast to the mausoleum's subdued color scheme, 
Five Tiffany-style stained glass windows stand out as bold visual statements. The largest is on the back wall and faces east, so that with every sunrise, the interior of the tomb is filled with a warm, golden glow. For the Lemps, whose lives were often impacted by turmoil and tragedy, the perpetual light serves as a peaceful and comforting memorial. Thank you.